glasses. <laughs> I knew Niall. Um, I didn't know Roy at all. I didn't know Roy from Adam back then. I mean, he didn't talk to the media. So after the game, which I guess it might have been, I might have been commentating for ITV. It might have been during that period when we, when ITV nicked Match of the Day away from the BBC. And Reedy said, come and have a drink in the office afterwards. So I went into the office, into Peter's office after doing the interviews. And I don't know if you recall, but as Roy Keane walked off, Niall, mm. <laughs> bless him, yeah. decided this is a good moment <laughs> for me to discuss Saipan with him on the touch live. Now, now there's one of the more intelligent footballers I've ever met, but I don't think his judgment was was particularly accurate that day. <laughs> he tried to shake his hand as Roy came off. And if Fergie was unhappy with the result, I think somebody got injured. I've got a feeling Mikel Sylvester got injured that day. So the, the, they didn't show in, in, the, in the manager's office, which is unusual for Manchester United. When you lose a draw, you know, Fergie's old, old school and would always come in and have a drink. Um, so we sat there chewing the fat and, uh, and Niall's in the room and suddenly the door opened without knock <laughs> and it was Fergie. And he said, I was told you were in here and he didn't want to talk to Reedy or anybody else. He just wanted to have it out with Niall. And there was one of those wonderful 30 second hairdryer moments, which I've actually been on the end of a couple myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just departed, slammed the door and then he opened again. And he pointed at Reedy and he said, well played today. <laughs> Closed the door again and was gone again. Niall Quinn is in talks tonight about a takeover of Sunderland. The former Sunderland striker flew in from Ireland earlier this evening. Now, Quinn is now meeting the Sunderland chairman, Bob Murray, about a deal to take over the club, which was relegated last season. No, obviously, uh, you've flown in on private jet. <laughs> Can you tell us what is going on? And what um, you well, basically, uh, you know, I'm here to see Bob Murray tonight and I'm hoping to uh, close out a deal for the football club, to be quite honest. Um, very, very disappointed uh, with the reports that came out of Sunderland this morning um, suggesting there was problems on our side. Uh, feel bad about that. Um, I've kept very quiet for the last 12 weeks. I've tried to do what I was told to do in terms of, uh, you know, confidentiality agreements and everything else. But uh, basically, um, my eight consortium members and I are finalised. We're very committed. Uh, due diligence is complete. Uh, financial diligence is complete. And we're, uh, we're raring to go. We just uh, need to get one more answer now. When we spoke a few weeks ago, I know it's the last game, or one of the last games against Arsenal, you said if your boys were poker players, they'd have a pretty strong hand. Is that still the case? Most definitely. I think uh, it's... Um, We've done what we've had to do. Um, we've delivered, and we'll just see what the answer is now. I know you're in a rush, and, and I know you can't say a lot because of the stock exchange regulations, but Sunderland Football Club it would be a huge step forward for this if, if this whole thing could carry forward, does not it? I hope so. I think that's uh, you know why we got here in the first place. We don't, don't want to do a big PR job now or anything. Uh, I'd like to think that people trust what I might bring to the table would be good, and uh, you know I'm just hopeful now you know that uh, after tonight I'll be able to do that. Very important next 24 hours. I would say so. Lost that match at Highfield Road. So my plan when I first stopped was, we're going to go on some family trips. We're going to become, we'd be like the Waltons, you know. We're all going to spend time together and go walk in the park. And I found after a month or two that they didn't have the same plans as me. So they, I think they were missing me kind of going to work as much as anything got offered a job at Sunderland and I was away on a family holiday. My family were looking at me a little bit, not saying it to me directly, but going, we, we, we kind of enjoy your company, but not too much of it. So when the job came back up, they were almost saying, you yeah, know, you should go for it. I certainly hadn't applied for any jobs. I'd only just been finished maybe my coaching badges. Uh, but then things kind of materialised that I, I'd have a chance of maybe going to Sunderland. I spoke to him, um, I suppose, at the start of the summer um, with Niall, but just, I just didn't feel like it was the right timing for me. What made you change your mind? Um, believe it or not, I think Sunderland had a game and um, I was looking at the scores coming in and uh, 
think they got beaten by Berry in uh, the League Cup. And uh, I was with some family members and Niall, Niall got interviewed. And one of them actually said they think Niall was gonna, they felt Niall was gonna have a heart attack. So, not that that swayed me. I just thought, but I just thought, <laughs> having been away on holiday with the family, I just, they knew I was still hungry and I was ambitious and Sunderland's a big job. And again, I suppose it was a case of, let's go for it and, and, and see how it goes, really. Roy Keane is set to make a shock return to the game as the new manager of struggling Sunderland. The club recently relegated from the Premiership, a rock bottom of the Championship, having lost all four of their opening games this season. Before I officially took over, I, I, obviously I went to watch a game. They'd obviously been relegated and they had a poor start to the season. So uh, the culture of the club, the environment was... When you've been relegated, I suppose it would have been very negative. And of course they had no manager. One set piece has uh, done the trick. And, uh, another one has from Neil Collins. It's 2-0 Sunderland. Watching the game just confirmed what I thought. I thought it's a club with huge potential. Um, they've got a group of players who've lost a little bit of confidence. Get me in there and I'm sure I can help them out. I think in life you've got to go for the chat. If it doesn't work out, at least you said you went for it. I'm sure if I, if I didn't take it this time, you know, four, five, six months, I might have been looking back on, you know, I might not get that opportunity again. Well, I think it was a gamble for, for both sides. Obviously, I was inexperienced. Sunderland, but obviously, in this second bottom, maybe the championship. But that's what life's about. Sometimes you have to go in and, uh, and take the opportunity. There's only one you. There's only one in the sporting world, the fascination with Roy Keane makes for compulsive viewing. His footballing odyssey continued on Weir's side today. The fan base is passionate, the expectation is high, the task he faces, monumental. He must instill a winning mentality into a club which has developed a culture of losing. If passion and faith were enough, Niall Quinn's love of the club would have been sufficient. They're not. Sunderland need backbone and guile. The change in mentality is as important as that in personnel. He's always been a winner in my eyes, Roy Keane, you know, and somebody like him might just give the, this club a boost, you know. Well, if he's a hard manager who was a player, we might be getting somewhere. I only hope he doesn't frighten the players we've got because they're frightened at the minute. <laughs> but oh, I hope, a, I think he will, if he's, he's, he's a Keane by name and Keane by nature. So the Keane managerial era is underway. The focus will be intense, the pressure immense. Whatever else it may be, it won't be boring. Quinney could now spend all his time as chairman and doing the work needed to make sure the Sunderland Magic carpet ride would be as smooth as possible for the new man in charge of the team.